स्थापितम ये नबू तले स्वयं रूपा गदा महियम ददाति स्व पदांतिकम हे कृष्णा कर्ण सिंधु दीन बंधु जगत पते गोपेशा गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमस्ते तप्त कांचन गौरंगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी विश्वानु स्ते देवी प्रणमामी हरि प्रिय जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंदा श्री अद्वैत गदाधार शिव सादी गौर भक्त वृंदा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे माम विष्णु पदाया कृष्ण प्रसाय भूतले भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी के नाम ने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवी गौर वाणी प्रचारी ने विशेष श्रीनिवाद दी पाश्चात्य देश तारी ने थैंक यू फॉर कमिंग भगवान थैंक्स सी फी कैन सो चैप्टर फाइव इज कॉल कर्म योग और एक्शन इन कृष्ण कॉन्शियसनेस so let's be our obeisances to this is shri shri radha govinda before we start yesterday's chapter this is the summary in uh, one slide there are 42 verses the chapter is divided into five sections for understanding the transcendental knowledge about krishna krishna is the goal of all paths and the creator of varnashram system karma yoga then sacrifices lead to transcendental knowledge and then the summary of all the transcendental knowledge this is a small chapter but uh, a power filled chapter is one of the one of my ma- most favorite chapters of bhagavad gita so arjun is going to ask krishna basically the same question that he asked in third chapter because he's somehow or other trying to avoid the fight so he's going to ask again sanyas or karma yoga which is better krishna will say karma yoga is better than sanyas and then nishkam karma yoga is even better and then liberation by focus on the supreme so let's try to have fun this is the first verse that arjun says arjun vacha sanyasam karma nam krishna punar yogam cha samshashi yashreyayate yor ekam tanme bruhi sunishchitam arjun said o oh krishna first of all you ask me to renounce work punar yo so karma nam sanyasam karma nam krishna so sanyasam karma na karma means work sanyasa means according to arjun give up work so krishna first of all you ask me to renounce work punar yogam cha samshashi punar means again yogam cha samshashi and again you recommended work with devo- devotion yashreya etayor ekam ekam means one and yashreya means tell me definitely which is superior definitely sunishchitam yashreya shreya means superior or ben most beneficial so tell me one thing which is most beneficial tan me bruhi sunishchitam now will you kindly tell me definitely which of the two is more beneficial very important it took me so much time i don't even know if i understood it yet correctly that what is the difference between this question and the question that arjun asked in third chapter so sanyasam karmanam krishna so means krishna you are telling me to sanyas the karma punar yogam cha samshashi and then you are again telling me to take up the karm or work with devotion yashreya etayor ekam tell me one thing which is shreya or superior tanme bruhi sunishchitam more most definitely tell me so chapter 2 krishna talks about arjun says give a, gives a reason compassion and krishna says refutes that answer refutes that um, comment of krishna by saying giving him gyan and the gyan of what he gives a knowledge of prabha uses the word misplaced compassion so he gives a knowledge of what is this chapter 2 11 to 38 was describing yes please Give the difference yes, between the soul and the body. Guru Maharaj, I'm sorry. Yeah, difference between the soul and the body. Difference between one is eternal, one is temporary. Yes. So, Guru Maharaj, you are the you are the uh, post doc student. You are the post doc. You are a professor. So maybe allow elementary grade us us in elementary grade maybe to participate, and then you check if we are doing it right or wrong. Yeah. So, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. I you will never be wrong because we are learning from you. But you check if we are doing right or wrong. Then you scold us and correct us. But thank you. Uh, 
And then Krishna, uh, Arjun says sinful reactions, you know, it's going to be like, okay, this is going to be, uh, talk to her. <laughs> sinful reaction. Uh, and then Krishna gives knowledge of buddhi yoga. Uh, what is the buddhi yoga? Buddhi yoga means what? Buddhi yoga means what? Mm -hmm. Knowledge of the self, the real self. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I'm trying, I'm arranging children to go with the neighbors, so they're going so I can continue the class. So, uh, yes, buddhi yoga is bhakti yoga, and then the most key verse was two forty one, which was. Uh, which was what? Who remembers 241? Any Shastrik? Or 241 is uh, That one. So why am I bringing it up? So Krishna, Arjun, so I'm bringing it up like what makes Arjun's confusion goes on and on and on. And then on third chapter, Krishna says, but for one who takes pleasure in the self, his human life is one of the self-realization and who is satisfied in the self only, fully satiated. For him, there is no duty. Okay, Arjun is told by Krishna that anybody who is taking pleasure in self and is satisfied only in self and self-realization, there is no duty, which Arjun takes it as no karma. And then Krishna also says, a self-realized man has no purpose to fulfill in the discharge of his prescribed duties. Nor has he any reason not to perform such a work. Nor has he any need to depend on any other living being. You see how Krishna is talking like a cryptic language. So Arjun is getting confused. That self-realized person has no purpose, but he can also do the duty, but he has no purpose to fulfill on his own. And he doesn't need to depend on any other living entity. So basically, we are saying Kshatriya has to depend on go. Kshatriya has to depend on uh, uh, a kingdom to rule, but a self-realized person has no one else to depend on. And then to add to more confusion, Krishna says in 4th chapter 33rd verse, O chastiser of the enemy, the sacrifice performed in knowledge is better than mere sacrifice of material possessions. After all, O son of Pritha, all sacrifices of work culminate in transcendental knowledge. You see, here again, towards the end of uh, fourth chapter, Krishna is giving uh, Krishna is giving priority to the transcendental knowledge over work, which is leading to Arjun's confusion. Uh, Arjun's confusion. Oh, can you tell me what's going on in this particular? Uh, painting here. Can you tell me? Shishupal is blaspheming Krishna on and on and on and on and Krishna is counting 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, off with his head. Yes. Uh, there is a very nice lecture of Guru Maharaj, which is, I think I've heard it over 50 times in Chicago where he explains this. I, If you want, I can share it. Uh, so I heard that from Guru Maharaj class in Chicago in 2006, I think. This is a recorded lecture. Yes, yeah, so sacrifice. So, to, so again, he's confusing. But towards the end of fourth chapter, look at how our own God confuses us. Towards the end of fourth chapter, Krishna is saying, therefore, the doubts which have arisen in your heart out of ignorance should be slashed by the weapon of knowledge. Armed with yoga, O Bharat, stand and fight. So basically, at the end of our chapter, he is telling stand and fight. So Arjun is like, what should I do? So just to give you a summary of what we just did. Chapter 2, Krishna gives Jnana of soul. So And then soul has no need to work in this world because it doesn't belong to this world. And then he says, but work through your bhakti yoga. First confusion becomes there. He asks a question in third year, third chapter. Gyan or Buddhi Yoga or Nishkam Karma Yoga, which one is better? Chapter 3, he asked this, what should he do? Then he heard, then he hears Krishna saying karma through Gyan, action in inaction in inaction in action. And then 
fourth chapter, he concludes the he concludes not concludes, but one of the last verses he says is by glorifying the transcendental knowledge. But towards the end, he says, "Stand and fight." Got it. So, what makes Arjun ask this question again is this, and this is not easy to understand. So, if you ask one hundred million times again, just just let it be. Now, devotional service is better than dry mental speculation. I think this we did. So we, I'm not going to go over it again. So this is very interesting. All beings, all of us are constantly making plans for the future. Is there anyone here who is not making plans for future? Mm -hmm. Yeah, anyone not looking for God Purnima, not looking for Advaita Chai Appearance Day, not looking for this class to get over. Yeah, we're all making plans for future. Then thoughts are manifested in actions and repeated actions form the habits. Habits make up our character. Character determines our destiny and how to take steps in the right direction is described in the fifth chapter. And there are steps leading to further entanglement in worldly complexities and there are steps which lead to a life of liberation, freedom from tranquility and peace. So just to reinforce what I just said, thoughts, lead to actions. Actions lead to habits. Habits lead to character and character leads to destiny. So basically, karma is dynamic. It's not static. We are not like fixed to it. It's dynamic. It can be changed. So Arjun is still confused. Why? Because it is Krishna's plan to keep Arjun confused. Why Krishna does so? For our benefit and to stress that work and renunciation are not opposite. So in third chapter, Arjun confuses devotional service to what? What does he confuse devotional service to? Or bhakti to? Uh, action, withdrawing from all action. Yeah, mm -hmm. inertia. Yeah, the Prabhupada uses the word inertia. Yes, thank you, Shri Mataji. Inertia. So he confuses uh, uh, Krishna consciousness to inertia. And, and it's so important for Krishna to make us realize that no, 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 it's not inertia. You got to keep moving, keep moving, keep working for me. Rather, one must learn to work in renowned spirit. So Arjun thinks that Gyan implies that renunciation of work and knowledge and work like light and darkness are contradictory. Krishna emphasizes, however, that one in knowledge should also work. Okay. Is it clear so far or because it's, it took me so long to understand what made Arjun ask this question again? Okay, so Sri Bhagavanu Vacha Sanyasa Karma Yogas Cha Nirishayasa Kara Ubhau Tayostu Karma Sanyasa Karma Yogo Vishishyate the Supreme Personality of God had replied, the renunciation of work and work and devotion are both good for liberation. But of the two, work in, work in devotional service is better than renunciation of work. So karma yoga vishishyate. Vishishyate means superior, better. So, it's, so he's saying both are okay, but karma yoga vishishyate. Uh, devotional service is better. So this is a very famous story from 10th uh, Canto or Krishna book uh, that King Nriga falls down due to fruitive activity. One may ask, why work in devotional service? Because most of the people around the world are going around saying that work is worship. Yeah, especially in India. Have you heard it? Have you heard this? Work is worship. If I can just do my work, that's worship. If I can just, you know, I don't need to really do anything else. Uh, I think yeah. I'm from India. Sridhi Mataji has heard it. So, uh, so... Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, somebody else had their hand up. Thank you. So King Nriga uh, was a king who was very fond of performing fruitive activities, sacrifices and charity. It is mentioned that he would perform so many sacrifices and charity and would give so much in charity as much as there are sand particles on earth or stars in the sky. That's what written in the chapter. He did one mistake. So one time he did the sacrifice and then there were two herds of cows. Uh, so, and each and every cow was bedecked with beautiful silken cloths and jewels and everything. So he gave the one herd of cows to one Brahmana and that Brahmana was going after the sacrifice. 
but somehow one cow escaped from his herd one who was already like donated to him it escaped and it joined the herd which was yet to be donated to another brahmana you see there are two brahmanas so the brahmana saw that my cow has left the herd and he went he ran behind that cow but by the time he reached nirga had already donated or redonated that cow in another herd to another brahmana and there was this fight between the two brahmanas that this is my cow he said no this is my cow this is my cow so nirga is saying that i'm sorry uh, maharaj this is my mistake it was my overlook i should have been more careful can you can one of you please let the cow go and in exchange i will give you 100000 cows now according to me it is a good deal you know one cow you let go and then you get 100000 cows which are milking cows and but these brahmanas were few like they were furious and then they cursed they cursed they cursed him so after nirga died and went to yamaraj the yamaraj said maharaj you have a good record you good but there is one problem you have to suffer for one curse so what do you want me to do you want me to give you the the result of the curse first or you want me to give you the enjoyment first so he said go for the curse then what happened Nega became a lizard in the uh, in the well, and Narad Muni blessed him that when many many thousands of years later, when Krishna will come, um, Krishna will take you out from this particular well. And then we know the story, right? Krishna went with his sons to picnic, and uh, Aniruddha saw this uh, lizard, and it was not a very deep well, but uh, nobody was able to actually get this lizard out. And then they went to grab their father and Krishna just put his uh, left hand under the well and, and grabbed it out. So basically, because of the touch of Krishna, he became pure and then he would conf he confessed the futility of fruitive activities. That there can always be a mistake. So why to go somewhere when we can get something which is more better? So this is uh, Rupa Goswami oh. saying, Prapanchakitaya buddhaya hari sambandhi vastunaha mumuksha bhi parityago vairagyam falku kathyate. When persons eager to achieve liberation renounce things related to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, thinking them to be material, their renunciation is called incomplete. So Prapanchakitaya buddhaya hari sambandhi vastunaha. Vastu means things, material things. Sambandha means relation. Hari means Krishna. So material things which have relationship to Krishna. Mumukshubhi parityago. But we leave it. Parityag. Tyag means leave it. Renounce it. That vairagya or that renunciation is falgu kathyate. Kathyate means is said. Falgu is uh, superficial. Falgu, Prabhupada explains, maybe Guru Maharaj can correct me, is a river which appears very deep, but if you put your hand in it, you can actually touch the sand bed at the end. So it appears deep, but there is no depth in reality. That river is there in, in Bihar. <laughs> Kurmaj, can you please, may I request you to repeat? Yeah, and Prabhupada refers to that river, and he tells that there's a river in Bihar. Bihar. It looks like a river, but actually when you touch it, it's just, it's just sand below. <laughs> Uh -huh. okay. Thank you. Thank you yeah, for the well, 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 a very skim, small surface of water, that's all. Uh -huh. so, in other words, it doesn't go deep at all. <laughs> See, thank you. That person looks very renounced, but uh, is very superficial. Right. So, karma yoga or karma sannyas. Thank you, Gurmanj. Ge nasa nitya sanyasi yo na dveshti na kankshati nidvando hi mahabaho sukham bandhatra mutshate. One who neither hates nor desires the fruits of his action is known to be always renounced. Such a person liberated from all dualities. Nidvanda hi mahabhavo. Dvanda means to, right? Nidvanda means free. Mahabhavo means such a personality. Easily overcomes, sukham bandha pramuchyate, easily overcomes uh, material bondage and is completely liberated, O mighty armed Arjun. So Krishna is basically saying, renounce results, not the action. He's not saying don't do activity. He says don't be attached to the activity. Easier said than done. 
And this is how this person looks like. This is Hazas Thakur when uh, we all know the story. Maya Devi came to allure him and he kept postponing meeting her. And then uh, she became a devotee. So then what happened? We know that she left the... Uh, Haridas Thakur left the place and she became a devotee of Krishna. So he was not either hating or desiring. He was equipoised in that way. Okay, she has come. I'm like, oh my God, if such a person comes in our life, like Prabhupada started is gone from Poverty Street. If I'm passing that place, I'll be like, I have to go away. I have to go away. It's so smelly. But such a person is like, okay, it's there. Like, how can I use it for Krishna? I'm not there, but this is Krishna saying, okay? Then he further explains the transcendental qualities of such a person because Arjun is asking, no, that sannyasi. So Krishna is describing the qualities of that sannyasi, not that one who's you know, renounced everything and is doing, not doing anything in the material world, but this is how this sannyasi is living. Brahmani adhaya karmani sangam chakta karoti yaha Lipyate na sa pape ma pape na padma patrami vam bhasha. One who performs his duty without attachment, surrendering the results onto the Supreme God, is not affected by sinful action as the lotus leaf is untouched by water. So, Brahmani Adhya Karmani. Brahmani refers to Krishna, Adhya Karmani, who performs the activity. Sangam tyaktva karoti yaha. Sangam means contact. Yaktva means leaving. So does not get contacted with the result, but does it, does the work for Brahmani or Krishna. Lipyate na sapape ma. Lipyate means get, how do you say lipyate? It's like, okay, if you're painting a wall, you're going to like put a brush over a wall and paint the wall, right? So that's like get coated, coated. Lipyate, the closest word I can think is coated. Na sapape ma. Does not get coated with the pap or sin. Padma Patram Ivam Bhasha. Like Padma Patpa, Patram. Padma is lotus. Patram is leaf. So the leaf of lotus, Ivam Bhasha, does not get touched. Okay, so like that, if somebody is working for Krishna, is not going to get quoted with sinful reactions. And I and this uh, is the I example. Can I ask of, a question about this now or should I wait till later? Can you wait till later? Can you wait till later? Sure. Thank you. I appreciate it. Don't forget though. And let's see, uh, I'm, I'm going to show this uh, two minute or maybe less than two minute of, of video of Prabhupada and I'm going to ask you something. This is Shri Prabhupada sitting on a uh, hippie hill in San Francisco. And we can see that uh, people were kind of intoxicated under psychedelic drugs and, and still they were dancing and chanting around Prabhupada. But Prabhupada was not affected. So that's an example of Padma Patram Ivam Bhashet. So uh, that was my question, but I only answered it. And then he explains one more quality of such a person. Vidya Vinaya Sampanne Brahmane Gavi Hastini Suni Cheva Sopakavecha Pandita Samadarshina. The humble sage, by virtue of true knowledge, sees with equal vision a learned and gentle Brahman, a cow, an elephant, a dog, and a dog eater. So, by virtue of true knowledge, Vidya Vinaya Sampanne, that is why this knowledge is so important. You cannot say that we can bypass Bhagavad Gita and get to the core of 
our existence. It's not possible because Krishna himself is saying that by virtue of this knowledge, Brahmane Gavi Hastini Suni Cheva Supakavecha Pandita Samadarshina. This knowledge gives a equal vision uh, to a learned and general Brahman. This knowledge gives an equal vision to a person to see a Brahman, a cow, an elephant, a dog, or a dog eater with equal vision. So what is equal? The behavior is not equal. So what's equal then? What does this equal vision mean? Samadarshinaha. What's equal? He sees the Lord in the heart of all living entities. And that's the equality of all the souls. Yes. I think Shridhari Mataji, you are also one of the professors here. So you also can be one of the editors of our answers. But thank you. I really appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. Yes. Um, so the soul. This is there's a similar verse in Ram Chaitramanas. I don't recollect the, the Chopai, but what it means is Lord Ram is telling Vibhishan that uh, anybody who comes to my lotus feet. Um, who who brings to my lotus feet the mother, the father, the wife, the son and himself as all the small ropes tied into a big rope and ties that rope around my lotus feet, I accept him. So the Samadarshina word appears there as well. And then we continue. This is my favorite verse. This is, this is here Krishna says, that what is the effect of not being a samadarshina? Okay, so far what we have discussed, this is towards the end of the chapter. So far we have discussed that Arjun is asking a question again, karma sannyas or karma yog? Vishishyate, which one is? Which one is superior? And then I went into the discussion that what made Arjun ask this question one more time to Krishna. And then Krishna went in more detail to explain to clear or slash everything from Arjun's mind that how does a sannyasi actually look? Okay, how does a sannyasi actually work? Is and then Prabhupada quoted Rupa Goswami Prabhupada's Falku Vera. What, what, what you said, what you said, what Prabhu? Yeah. Okay, sorry. And then the other qualities like Brahmani, Gavi Hastini. So everything they look at superior, they don't get touched by um the, the, they don't get coated by the sinful reaction as the lotus leaf is untouched by water and they are going to renounce the result and not the action they'll still work but now krishna is going to say what is the other option a person who is not working in that way this is the future and this is a very powerful verse okay let's dive in Yehi samsparsha jabhoga dukha yonaya evate adi antavanta kante ya nate shuramate buddha. So I'll go verse by verse. So yehi samsparsha jabhoga. Sparsha means touch. Okay. Bhoga means enjoyment. So the enjoyment that is coming by the touch. For example, if somebody is drinking liquor, so the liquor the, the is going to touch the tongue and then it's going to elicit some sort of an enjoyment. So that's like the enjoyment which is coming by the touch of a sense and sense object. Dukkha yonaya evate. Dukkha yonaya evate. Dukkha means misery. Yonaya evate is the beginning of a miserable life. Why? You know, people wait. We wait. We, we always take a rain check for our happiness. Tomorrow I'll be happy. Tomorrow I'll be happy. We invest in our retirement plan. We invest in our family. We invest in our medical insurance, right? But, but Krishna is saying that happiness, which is coming with a touch of a sense and sense object, is the beginning of actually a miserable life. Krishna explains why. Adi Antavanta Kanteya. Kanteya was Arjun, Arjun or, son of, or son of Kunti. Such a enjoyment has adi, means beginning. Anta means end. Because such an enjoyment has a beginning and an end. Na teshu ramate buddha. Teshu means satisfaction. Ramate means happiness. Buddha means intelligence. So such a person, an intelligent person, will not seek satisfaction and enjoyment in this kind of a, in this kind of a, uh, enjoy, in this samsparshita bhoga principle. So intelligent person does not take part in the sources of misery which are due to contact with the material senses. O son of Kunti, 
such pleasures have a beginning and an end and so the wise man does not delight in them okay so this to further explain i'll give reference from shrimad bhagavatam explains that is the lower species of life let's say the moth okay their sense of vision is very powerful so they get attracted to you in the, in especially in india you see that after rainy season if there is like a street lamp and it's very bright they get attracted to it then what happens if the bulb is very hot they go touch it and then they get fried and die so the sense of vision takes them to their deathbed now deer the sense of hearing is very strong right the hunter is playing a flute and it gets very allured by it goes looking for the hunter what happens the hunter catches and the deer dies now for a honey bee the sense of smell is very strong so it goes looking for a nice smell goes in the flower there gets the nectar sits there because it's so fragrant now the sun sets the flower closes it gets trapped and dies so the sense of smell takes it to death for a fish sense of taste is very strong so there's so much food inside a river or ocean or wherever it may be but how does a fisherman catches a fish throws a bait goes the fish goes looking for the food and then dies so the sense of taste takes it to its death for an elephant such a big animal how is it caught sense of touch is very small is very strong i'm sorry how is it caught the the elephant catcher digs a hole in the earth covers it up with the dry with the tree leaves and shoots and trains a she elephant to go and allure this gentleman and but she is trained to go around the hole and this guy running behind this this elephant lady falls in the pit and is caught so is it in elephant in animal world one sense is very strong and it takes them to their death but what is our condition in our condition everything is very strong each and every sense is very strong so imagine <laughs> a constant bombardment one time we did research when i was in mangalore i i don't know if i think it definitely needs to be updated because it's about 20 years ago that how many times in a day a person living in a city gets stimulated with unwanted information i'm sure it's way more now but that time i can say do you want to throw some guess like how many times in a day person who is living in a city gets stimulated by unwanted information just throw a number throw a number how many times a day maybe 500 500 okay you're very gentle prabhu thank you okay 2000 thousand thousand okay i'm talking about a person living in a city okay thank you very nice thousand anyone else are you guess not innumerable in, okay so no, that's too much to count <laughs> throw some number <laughs> thank you so we came up like on an average 1 lakh times 1 lakh times 100000 times one person gets uh, stimulated by unwanted information one time i saw an ad for mascara long time ago and the advertisement was made in such a way you know the mascara was coating the eyelash and the eyelash was curly and beautiful and the eyes were looking so good i got spellbound my god my life is miserable without a mascara you know so this is how powerful these advertisements are so uh, we have to understand ye hi samsparsh ja bhoga dukha yona evate then krishna gives the final verdict of this chapter you know what it's too much uh, oh more than somebody said one and back tags uh, scarlet mata ji thank you krishna says you know just come to me all your solace your problems it's like come on come to me he says this hoktaram yagnata pasam sarvaloka maheshwaram suhidam sarvabhuta nam yatva mam shantim rachati so the hoktaram yagnata pasam bhokta means enjoyer so krishna is the enjoyer of all the yagyas or sacrifices and tapasya means austerities now the question would be is that krishna is the enjoyer of all the sacrifices and austerities performed by who 
هم به پافان به بو پافان به پیمکشوری پافان به شریمتی نو 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 سرو لوکا به هیشورم هی از پروپرایتر آف آل دی پلانس ایوری بادی ایوری سنگل اندیویجوال الائیو این اینی سپیشیز اینی ویر هی از پروپرایتر سو وڈیور آسٹریٹیز این تپسیاز آر آر سکریفائزیز دیر دوئنگ کشنہ از انجوائر سول انجوائر سوہر دم سرو بھوتا نام سوہر دم سرو بھوتا نام بیس فرینڈ آف ایوری بادی Gyatva maam shantim rat chiti. One who understands this gets the shanti. This is a peace formula. Prabha used to call this verse as a peace formula. The sage is knowing me as the ultimate purpose of all sacrifices and austerities, the supreme lord of all planets and demigods, and the benefactor and well-wisher of all living entities, attain peace from all the pangs of material miseries. Prabhupada explains in the purport there are three things going on in this particular verse. One, knowing Krishna as the ultimate purpose of all sacrifices and austerities. Two, Supreme Lord or Krishna as the Lord of all planets and all demigods. Three, benefactor and well-wisher of all living entities. So if somebody understands these three things, that particular individual will attain peace from the pangs of material miseries. Nobody else. If anybody else says, I have a very peaceful life, uh, check, are they doing these three things? Have they understood Krishna as the ultimate purpose of all sacrifices or studies? Have they understood Krishna as the sole uh, proprietor of all planets and demigods? Have they understood Krishna as the supreme benefactor and well-wisher of all living entities? If not, they're lying. Or I am lying. I'm lying to myself when I'm saying I'm very peaceful. Okay. So this is, um, I'm so sorry, what is happening? Uh, okay, I'll go. Sorry, we'll, we'll ask you questions. This is from another presentation I do. So this is the summary of the chapter. Arjun asks, most important thing for me in this, uh, uh, in this, uh, uh, in this particular chapter was, what made Arjun ask this question again, which is superior, karma sannyas or karma yoga? And I, I did spend a lot of time on it. If it is still not clear, I'd be very happy to address uh, or we can go back to that. And Krishna answers, Karmi Yoga is superior to karm, uh, to Sanyas from verse number 2 to verse number 6. Then Nishkam Karma Yoga or a Karma Yoga, which is not dependent on any result, but person is doing for the sake of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, frees one from any bondage, which Krishna explains from verse 7. To verse number 16 and then liberation by focus on the supreme verse 17 to verse 29 where he talks about the futility of um, putting an, a hope in enjoying the senses and sense of enjoying the enjoyment which arises by the touch of senses and sense objects okay uh, so there's going to be a poll and then i'm going to play one video and then we'll take the questions is there any is that okay, Srimati? Yes, yes. Okay. So please feel motivated to go back and open this chapter. It's a small chapter. You can finish it in maybe an hour uh, immediately after you read from now and maybe relish it um, maybe a little more. That will be my aim to encourage each one of us to read. Okay, so while I pull up the video, Srimati will launch the poll. Thank you. Okay, Shimati, over to you. Yes, Hare Krishna. Hare, Hare Krishna, Krishna, everyone. Um, yeah, here comes the first one. Are you able to see? Yes. Okay. So what is Arjuna's confusion at the beginning of chapter 5 of the Bhagavad Gita? I request everyone to participate. Seven out of thirty-one, nine out of thirty-one. Then fourteen. Come on, devotees. It's a very easy question.
16, 56% participated. It's one minute. I'll give 20 more seconds. What is Arjuna's confusion at the beginning of chapter 5 of the Bhagavad Gita? Arjuna is confused if he must fight this battle or kill himself. Arjuna is confused if he must take peace with his relatives one last time. Arjuna is confused if he must fight this battle or renounce. Arjuna is confused if he must accept Krishna as his guru. Okay. 18 of 30. Thank you. I'm going to end this here. Um, so the correct answer is Arjuna is confused if he must fight this battle or announce. So 17 out of 18 um, answered correctly, 94%. And uh, we'll go back to the next question. Yeah, the next question is, what is the nature of material pleasure? Are you able to see? Yes. Yeah. And I want to answer though. They are motivating and keep us happy always. They are temporary. They have a beginning and an end. They are eternal and everlasting. They are always giving new new tastes and realizations. This is a very easy question to If you get that one wrong, then you better go back and read your book. <laughs> 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 20 out of 30 <laughs> participated. Nice. Now well, you made the question so easy. <laughs> Frank Kishari gave it to Maraj. <laughs> okay, so yeah, 21 out of 30 participated. 22. Everybody get it right? Only one person got it wrong. Uh, 21 out of 22 uh, correct, answered correctly. What, is, what is their answer? That it's eternal and full of joy? They are always giving new, new tastes and realizations. <laughs> the correct answer is they are temporary. They have a beginning and an end. Thank you all for participating. Realizations. <laughs> What kind of realizations are you getting? <laughs> okay, thank you. Ms. Prem Kishari, please continue. Are we, are we live streaming or can I show the video? <clears throat> yes, we are live streaming. Um, Maybe you have to stop the live stream. Question for you. For me, Grimaj? Yes, Grimaj. For anybody. Uh, go to verse number seven in the chapter. <laughs> yes, Grimaj. Krishna Chaitanya. Verse number seven. Five five point seven. I think I didn't present the verse, so I will open the verse. You categorized it in one section though. I did? Yeah, it was in, in your summary of the chapter you put it in one category there. Yeah. Nishkam karma frees one from bondage. Yeah. You, you, Can I open the verse, Gurmach? Is it okay? No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, Gurmach. Yoga Yukta Visudatma Vijitatma Vijendriya Sarva Bhutatma Bhutatma or one of the name of you can. Who works in devotion, his pure soul with controls in mind and senses is dear to everyone, and everyone is dear to him. Thus, always working, such a man is never entangled. It seems like, although this is a uh, chapter describing uh, karma yoga in action, this 
verse describes the qualities of a pure soul. He works in devotion. His mind and senses are always controlled. He, because he works for the benefit of everyone, he is dear to everyone and everyone is dear to him. And then the last part really illustrates the chapter to, uh, theme is that he, he doesn't get entangled in any of the activities he forms because he works in devotion. <laughs> so it kind of illustrates, this verse kind of illustrates a pure devotee. Yes, Kamaj. Is that correct? <laughs> so, yes, I would think so. Because he's, he's a pure soul. Prabhupada is translating who's a pure soul. So, pure devotee. Yeah, but then the characteristics are given. Works in devotion, controls his mind and senses. Dear to everyone, everyone's dear to him. So much the question is, is this the description of a pure devotee? Yeah, within the context of, uh, you know, karma yoga in action. Karma yoga in action, how I understood is nishkam karma yoga. Like, which is like, um, the devote, the person is working, but is not looking forward to enjoy the results. Might also be looking for the results, but not looking forward to enjoy the results. Uh, and so is looking for those can be applied in different ways. Uh, yes, Grimaj, please explain us. Well, one the, the last line because he's working, but he works in devotion, that means he's doing he's performing devotional service. Um there's no entanglement, there's no desire for fruit of activity, nor does he get uh, caught up by the, uh, the the results of his activity. He does, he's performing, uh, what is it, there's karma, vikarma, and akarma. This is akarma, or devotional service. Mm -hmm. So it's worth it. Mm -hmm. So the, so, if I may clarify, your your is there a question or you're trying to emphasize a point for us to understand? I'm, I'm seeing this verse as being a little bit outside of the theme of the class of the uh, of the whole chapter in the sense that it, uh, it's talking about pure devotional service. <laughs> but I think uh, if may I may I share may I share what what I my understanding is, and then everyone else can also pitch in. Um, Arjun is thinking that it's going to be entangling. If he's going to fight, either he wins or loses. It's both ways is entangled. He when he if he wins, then he has killed all his family members. Who is entangled in the sinful reaction? If he wins, then he's then who is he going to? If he loses, then okay, it's better to lose. But then why to kill all these people and then lose? Why not just to just give up? You know. So in both ways, if I'm understanding it right, he's thinking it's entangling. Now, Krishna is trying to uplift him from this dwanda or duality. You win or you lose. Just get, do it for me. Just do it because I'm telling you to do it. And this is how a person who does a work for me is not entangled. Cool. Uh, Thank you for the explanation. Perfect. Oh, so it's more or less a response to his dilemma of being working or not working. <laughs> he sees either side as being uh, uh, motivated by either fruit of activity or personal gain. Yeah, yeah. So you're he's he's thinking he's going to be entangled, uh, and he and then Krishna is saying you're not going to be entangled. Because such a person is never entangled. Right. But if there's anyone else who would like to answer better, please go ahead. No, well, I think you hit the point. The, the answer is, I, I like this verse. It's one of my favorite verses. And I apply it to people who are who are of that caliber. In other words, who, do, who work in devotion, who are completely free from personal motivation. 
And the thing is that they're dear to everyone and everyone is dear to them. This is a very powerful statement. And we really illustrates that verse in the uh, Sadgo Squami Astakam, Dira Dira Jana Priya Priya Taro. But uh, uh, they're dear to even the ruffians and the gentle. <laughs> yes. Thank you for teaching us. The verse has elements of pure devotional service in it, a lot of it, but it ends with the idea of detachment from or unentangled, although one is working, which is the theme of the chapter. <laughs> Thank you, Gurmach. I just want to highlight that verse as being quite unique within the context. <laughs> Thank you. Any other devotee? Go ahead, uh, Dipteshwaku. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so, Ilenya Mataji uh, has a question. Uh, do you want to go ahead and talk, or should I uh, read out? It's it's posted in the in the group. Oh, oh, the chat. Okay, I can go to the chat. Sorry, Prabhu. Hi, Krishna. Please accept my humble obeisances. All goes to Prabhupada. All goes to Gurudev. It is very important. Uh, to set goals in spiritual life because they help us maintain focus on Krishna and not get carried away. How can we reconcile the spiritual goals of community service of devotees of community service of devotees? I'm not able to temple service temple services with personal ones. It is said that we must spiritualize our relationships in order to serve Krishna, even in relationships between devotees of whatever nature they may be. How is it possible to reconcile these two aspects? Mataji, I want to ask a clarification. Thank you for the question. Your questions are always nice every day you ask. Um, so what is, what is the zest like you're trying to ask that is... if it, in the temple, we might not be getting along with other devotees, but we still try to spiritualize. Or can you clarify what's the what's the intent? Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Um, yeah, in this time, I stay in a temple, no? And uh, my question is, uh, um, uh, the um, relationship is very important, uh, and the relationship is uh, a service, no? relationship in spiritual in a, a spiritual life and in particular in the temple uh, but I um, my, my question is uh, um, is uh, have the, the um, it's difficult um, it's okay to speak what, how you're speaking please go ahead okay uh, it is possible uh, um, have uh, uh, different di have a goals maintain the uh, mm, the focus in Krishna uh, and having a um, in service in service and have a um, spiritual relationship in same, same times. Okay. Well, Thank I think, you. I think it's synonymous that mm -hmm. you, can, you can't actually do, do service without developing a relationship. The relationship is some bundle. Service is abhideya. Now, some bundle precedes abhideya. So some bundle means relationship. And there are different ways to categorize relationships based on the nature of the participants in the relationship. So you have to establish a relationship mm -hmm. and actually develop the service attitude, proper service attitude. Yeah. The relationship is first. In other words, guru, guru disciple is a, mm -hmm. a relationship. But what is the nature of that relationship? I mean, there are certain dynamics that make up that relationship. And then you have to know that, otherwise, 
for instance, if the, if the disciple wants to be on the equal level and discuss things with the spiritual master, then that, that's, a, that's against the principle of that sambandha. So there is a certain quality or certain characteristics that make up each and every relationship, depending on the relationship. Mm -hmm. Service is the way that that relationship plays itself out. Mm -hmm. Thank you. you. You get that, Maxi? You get it? It's okay. Good, okay. Guru Maharaj, is it okay if I say if I if I open my small mouth? <laughs> is it okay? If I talk, talk so much. Um, do you give permission? Yeah, uh, good enough, good enough, good enough, good enough. Yeah, yes, Guru Maharaj. Come on today. Yeah, so, yeah. so uh, Ilidia Mataji. You see, we are reading Bhagavad Gita, we're, trying, we're uh, reading the overview of Bhagavad Gita, right? We're reading the overview of Bhagavad Gita. And Bhagavad Gita is a dialogue mostly between Krishna and Arjun, mm -hmm. right? So what is Arjun and Krishna investing in even before the war has begun? What are they trying to invest in? They're trying to invest in each other, right? They're taking time off in the middle of a war to invest in each other. So it's so important to invest in relationships with the devotees. Uh, otherwise, what is what is Arjun's motivation to even do the war or you know fight the war? <clears throat> Clearly, he is completely demotivated for his own sake. What's the motivation? His relation with Krishna, right? So uh, stay with the theme of Bhagavad Gita. Your questions will be answered everywhere. So, Shri Devi Mataji. Thank you, you so much, Mataji. Thank you. Shri Devi Mataji, uh, uh, I remember you in the middle of the class. Go ahead, Mataji, please. If I'm, if it's okay, Diptesh Prabhu to ask. Yes. Yes. Please. Yeah, I was talking about the slide which showed verse 5, 10. Okay, I will go there. 5, 10. Not affected by sinful action as lotus leaf is untouched by water. Yeah. Hmm? So, mm -hmm. by definition, this person is performing his duty without attachment in devotional service, which is, you know, in the mode, it's above the modes when one performs one duty, one's duty without attachment, that is bhakti yoga, it is where is the question of sinful action? It is not sinful at all. So then where is the question of being untouched by water, uh, I mean, lotus leaf by water? Because his the nature of his service is on the transcendental platform because devotional service is bhakti yoga, which is on the transcendental platform. So where is the question of not affected by sinful action when his action itself is pure? Well, that's just the explanation, that's all. One who performs his duty without attachment, surrendering the results of the Supreme God, well, and then one who does that is not affected by sinful action. That's all. It's just the explanation of what is being said. That's all. That's one of the, re that's the results of performing duty without attachment. And you, you're, you're, you're changing the, the, conception of the text that oh how can anybody be affected by well, you're assuming that people know that performing without attachment you, you're not affected but Krishna is not assuming that he's explaining it that's all yeah. your assumption is correct but it's not it's not what Krishna is doing is explaining that's all just like if I tell you, you know, if you go out in the wintertime without proper dress, you might get sick. Well, that's understandable, but still, the explanation is given. Hmm. Hmm. That's all Krishna is doing. He's just simply explaining what's the result of performing a duty without attachment. So that means performing action in bhakti yoga is totally pure and therefore such a person is not affected by any sinful action because he is not performing any sinful action. 
Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, but it requires explanation, and that's what Krishna is doing. Okay. <laughs> He's simply explaining, that's all. <laughs> okay, thank you. But if you if you read that puppet, if you read the verse, Brahmani Adhaya Karmani, if I may go to the verse, is it okay, Gurmaj, if I go to the verse proper? Yeah. Is a point I want to make? Uh, and I may be wrong, but and I'd be happy to rectify my understanding, but uh, there are two things happening here. Prabhupada is translating uh, Brahmani, Adhaya, Brahmani is okay, Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Adhaya Karmani, resigning all works, Sangam, attachment, Tyakta Garoti Yaha, giving up, performs, who? So, there are two things happening, is that he is not attached, which is secondary, which is secondary. Prabhupada is translating attachment as first in the translation, but if you read the verse, Shri Mataji, Krishna is saying, Brahmani Adhya Karmani, working for me, and then no attachment. Prabhupada is translating one who performs his duty without attachment, part one. That's not enough, according to Krishna. Part two is surrendering the results onto the Supreme Lord. So just not being attached can be a Mayavadi too, but surrendering the results to the Supreme Lord is more important to Krishna. That's why Krishna says that first. And then says, Sangam Tyakta Karotiha second. Okay, yeah. got, got it? Yeah, so, yeah, very, very expert understanding of the verse. Good. So it's not just, that, just not without attachment, but surrendering the results is more yeah. important. Yeah, you have to take the whole thing. That's just part of it. Thank you. Yes. Good. Thank you for the explanation, Gurmaj. Thank you. Okay, Diptesh Prabhu, I, I will keep my mouth quiet. <laughs> Sorry. No, you keep going. <laughs> so, dear devotees, do we have any questions, comments, realizations you would like to share? Please. Um, there was a wonderful, uh, succinct explanation with the Siddhanta so chapter 5. So if you have any questions, please um, you can go ahead and ask. You can actually ask questions about your own life. About the things that you do and how, how it implies uh, how it uh, plays itself out within the category of attachment or detachment. When I uh, Shidei Mataji, when I like like introspect more, like introspect more in the application of this verse. It says one who performs his duty without attachment. Uh, attachment, there's a difference between attachment and love. It doesn't mean that there's no love. So without attachment, but with love. That's why you're surrendering, right? How can you surrender without love? So attachment means that, okay, I, because I love you, so you have to give it to me. That's attachment. You said, like, okay, I can say my son, uh, be because I'm your mom, and because I've, I'm your mom, because I'm raising you, and, I, and I'm attached to you. So when you grow up, you got to give it back to me. So that's, like, toxic. Mm -hmm. But say, because I'm your mom, and I, I, and, I, and I love you so much, and I see my reflection in you, I love you. That's love. I don't know, that's, like, a, not a very perfect explanation, but it's different. So Krishna is emphasizing, love me. Just love me. That's why you do it for me. Don't be like attached to that. I don't know if it makes sense. Uh, yeah. How about how about this? Uh, I'm going to pose a question. Can I pose a question? Imagine you are the boss of all of us. <laughs> you put me in that position, I, I'm going to run away. I'm one of the players, that's all. <laughs> I'm trying to play. So someone says, I love you, but I can't follow what you say in terms of what I should do. So how would you respond to that? And where does that fit within this category here? Oh, so I have one more to add on. Can I can I add on to it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, okay, so I tell my son, I I because I love you, I get up at six in the morning, you have to go to school. Because I love you, I uh, get up, get ready for school, 
because i love you get up eat your breakfast do your prayers because i love you go to school and my mom my son will say mom when will you stop loving me <laughs> yeah, he's, if he says that he's very intelligent i guess they will like so if, if you love me but i don't want to follow i think that invites a dialogue that invites a dialogue why say so, um, they say to the guru i love you but i can't do what you say what do you, what does that mean um, that means you love what you want to do more than you love the guru nice answer yeah. <laughs> but there did you say that does it say that there's no love there for the guru or it's that love is sentiment or that love is based on personal interest or well, no, how would... there may there may be love for guru there may be uh, there will be love for guru because that's how the relationship has come about but the material attachment is so deep and has such a, a stranglehold on that person that it's like an addiction and they are going to need some special surgery or some uh, uh, special help to overcome that and understand that really the guru is uh, only trying to help you by giving that instruction or giving that uh, uh, order and he only wants you to be uh, even better situated in your devotional life that's why he's saying that it's yeah. not to cramp your style or spoil your enjoyment or ruin your life or any such thing but the material okay okay don't over don't over explain so the point is can you do you say that there is still love there so yeah the, the, the love is still there you would count it as love then but there is still reasons why one cannot follow yes Oh, okay. Good answer. Thank you. Very nice answer. Thank you, Shri Mataji. Thank you, Maharaj. Um, we have one hands raised by Deepthi Mataji. Sorry uh, if yeah. I'm getting your name correct, but would you like to go ahead and ask? Yes, Prabhuji. Thank you so much for giving this opportunity. Um, my obeisance to the Guru Maharaj. Uh, Prabhuji, I mean, Maharaji, I wanted to ask, like, uh, so what is the difference between the goal and, uh, like, uh, you know, um, without expecting uh, to do the karma? So I always get confused because uh, if I have to explain my kids as well, we should always have a goal in our life, right? What we want to achieve. But uh, now we are saying that, okay, just do our karma, but don't expect the result. So how one we should practice in our uh, daily life that well i think that's explained in the chapter that the, the results of one's activities is not dependent on one's action and that's mentioned in the third you have a right to perform your duties but never consider yourself the cause of the results of your activities and never be attached to not doing your duty you got to do your duty, but you should know that they, by the by your own efforts, the results are not are not within your power to bring. You can't bring in the results. Results come from higher powers, or by results of one one's previous karma, which is also something with outside of your your purview to bring about. So yeah, so you. We and in the material world, when you're doing material activities, yeah, you can do that. You can emphasize a result and say you have to do that. But the thing is, no one can actually bring about the result simply by their own efforts. So when you know that, you tend to go for the results, but be it detached from the results at the same time. And that that's the prop, that's the platform of happiness. Because when you're attached to the results, 
then you you're elated when you get what you want, and you're uh, unhappy when you don't get what you want. So you still try for a particular result, but you but you remain detached from the result. You're attached to the effort only. That's all. So you emphasize to your children they have to work that way, and only only when either your karma or your Lord or some third factor comes in there, the results actually come, not by one's own effort. It mentions that there are five factors of action and one of them is the super soul, one is the endeavor, one is the place, the time, like that. And the, the performer is one fifth of the activity. So we should try for results, but we should be unattached to the results at the same time. We use a little cliche that kind of illustrates this point and says, you have to act like it depends on you and you have to know it doesn't. Which is not easy to do. Then you might say, well, why work for anything if you're not if you don't want a particular result? That would be another point. Why do anything if I don't care about the results? Then I just don't and that's you know, that's our Juna's position. Renunciation is I just renounce because you know the results are all, obviously they're not going to be good, so I'll just might might as well just renounce it. But why make such an effort to get results? Better to renounce the whole idea. So these are wrong ideas. These are, these are ways of getting around that same point. But the idea is that you have to work. You have to do your duty, even in a material sense. But you should know that by your own efforts, the results are not within your power to bring about. Prabhupada talks about that. Just like he says, Two men are working very diligently and one is getting a lot of money regularly, thousands, and, that, and next the other person is hardly getting anything. They're work, both working in a very certain way and both are uh, making the effort to get results. One is getting great results and the other one is getting no results. So then that third factor, the third party, is making the difference. Either one's karma on the material level or on the spiritual level, the, the sanction of the Supreme Personality of God. So Maharaji, should we aspire for the result? I mean, I, I'm unfollowing, but uh, should we aspire for the result? Yes, yes, yes. You should aspire for the results, but don't be attached to it. <laughs> Got it. Thank you, Maharaji. And what Prana? Yeah. If you why well, why do anything if you're not going to try to get any result? <laughs> Arjuna, Krishna told Arjuna, you got to fight. <laughs> but don't consider that the results are based on your your fighting. You still have to fight. So you have to guide your children, say, yes, you have to work in this way and you have to try for it and you have to go for it. But the the misery is that when we when we don't get the results, we feel unhappy. We should take part in the effort. That's that's where our the effort is where we put our emphasis and not so much on the results. The results will come. So make the effort quality qualify the effort, make the effort the best effort you can make. And leave the results up to the material nature or to Krishna ultimately. <laughs> Which is the same in one sense. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you. Maharaj. And that's the platform of happiness. People are unhappy because they want results, and when they don't get it, they feel, oh, they want to give up. But a person who acts without attachment can continue to act even despite the results are not coming. Mm -hmm. but the, 
they're making benefit, they're performing the activity, and therefore they're they're rightly situated. You have to do your duty. What did I, what did it, what does the second chapter say that Krishna told Arjun, hey, you gotta fight, and if you lose, you get you go to the heavenly kingdom, and if you win, you're the conqueror of the world. You can't lose, you will win. So doing your duty, you're rightly situated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, thank you, Mataji, for the question. Uh, Maharaj, there's one hands raised. Uh, if you're okay for time, can we take it or? No, well, I got plenty okay. of It's not my time. Uh, so Teja Prabhu, uh, do you want to go ahead and ask? You raised your hand. I don't have yes, much control of time. <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj, Nanak Pranam. Uh, I have a question. Uh, so when we are aspiring for goal or maybe any anything, uh, how long can we uh, try for it? Uh, for example, uh, let's say there is a competition exam, like uh, to get into a uh, you know, graduation, like, you know, in India, uh, we have IITs or, you know, some colleges like that, like, you know, premium colleges, premium tier colleges. If somebody is all aspiring for, you know, to get into the college and uh, how many, like, you know, how long could we, you know, uh, put our efforts to get into, you know, to write that exam and, uh, you know, wish to go get into that institution. Like, you know, maybe we can wait for two, three years, but if still we are not able to make it, should we uh, still give it a try and uh, put our efforts? Or like, you know, uh, should we take it's not part of our karma and uh, leave, it, uh, leave it aside and try out some other thing? That's a very good question. It's a question that bewilders many people. <laughs> But I'm gonna since I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that answer to Frankie Shuri to handle that because she knows she's right there doing that every minute. <laughs> I don't think I'm a perfect example though, Guru Man. So maybe you can start dancing and maybe. <laughs> you understand the question? What he gave? Uh, what I understood, I can reflect back that how long are we gonna? try to invest in these relationships? Is that what you asked Teja Prabhu, if I may clarify? Uh, not particularly relationship, Mataji, anything like in, in general, like, you know, uh, uh, if you are having any goal and uh, how much time, uh, uh, like, you know, uh, like, you know, can we invest to achieve that goal? Like, for example, let's say competitive exam, or maybe in, even if you consider for relations, relationships also, or maybe preaching side also, like if we are trying out a strategy in preaching, if that is not working, should we uh, continue trying the same strategy or you know, move on to a different way to preach? Like, you know, in, in general, I'm asking. I will answer the question fully, but I'll give a partial answer. The partial answer is as you're making an effort to achieve something, and you'll find yourself uh, not achieving it, you, know, you can either give up or you can approach the same situation in a different way. I think by approaching it differently, you'll get the result. So these are two options that people, either they give it up and thinking, oh, it's not something that I meant to achieve, or the other thing is, Maybe I can achieve it, but I'm just not approaching it in the right way. So, okay, thank you, Sherry. You put the topping on the cake. <laughs> Good much. Um, so, Teja Prabhu, if I may address your question in two different ways. One is like, okay, preaching strategy. And another one is, okay, I'm going to, I'm investing in the family and my personal goals in my career, education, or fa or children, or all that, right? Is that okay? If we address it into different pathways. So, um, first is like we the yeah you can set a personal goal, but when I when we are setting a preaching goal, it can never be one person. That's my sincere like realization. I cannot like go out and preach without a backup of other devotees or spiritual master or a parampara. So that is always a lot of 
uh, a lot of uh, uh, this, what is the right word that's always more futile more uh, fruitful if it is done in the association uh, and then it is approached to the right kind of audience in the right way i cannot like uh, teach a gujarati class in english slides it's not it won't be that impactful okay uh, another thing is personal goals so it changes as we age honestly it, even if I have seen in Krishna conscious children born in Krishna conscious families, it keeps changing. So if let's say I'm in a middle age now, so my goal for myself is, okay, I'm going to do it because I have this responsibility uh, for the for my children or my family, which I'm going to do it as service to Krishna. But my heart is I have to do a little more, little more like, okay, it's so I'm going to be like time, there's a timeline. But if somebody is, starting a family you know they're like in their 20s and 30s and they're getting married then they might have okay i'm going to enter this family as a service to krishna so you see and then when somebody is like 50 year old 60 year old 70 year old it'll keep changing i think i did emphasize in the class and i'm meditating on this nowadays in really seriously karma is dynamic it's not static it's not like you know you're like chained to it and then that's how you done. It's dynamic. It, it keeps changing. So uh, just be excited about the change. Uh, and also uh, the backbone or the foundation has to be, uh, am I going towards where I wanted to go? Recently, I learned, Bhaktisdhanta Prabhupada said about, your, about our Krishna consciousness, every Ekadashi, we have to reset and redefine our goal in Krishna consciousness. Basically, you know, every Ekadashi, go back and reset your goal and redefine your goal for ne until next Ekadashi. Did it did it address? Of course, Guru Maharaj addressed everything, but did it address what I'm saying? It wouldn't be same for a 20-year-old devotee and a 60-year-old devotee. It cannot be. It, it wouldn't be. I, I would add the principle of uh, sanction from authority. When you're given an instruction by an authority, you may authorities, your material authority, which might be your parents or your teachers, and your spiritual authority would be your spiritual master. Um, when you're working under something in devotional service and you've been given instructions to accomplish something, then you know simply by the instruction it's a matter of time before the accomplishment will unfold. But when you do it in the material sense, as as Frank uh, Kishori says, the dynamics are always changing. And so you have to reevaluate your situation constantly. Even within the, the teachers and authorities that give you, because they're imperfect. <laughs> they're imperfect and whereas the spiritual master or the pure devotee is not imperfect he's giving you something that is perfect it's just a matter of uh, fulfilling that by working towards that goal despite all of the reverses because <laughs> he knows that that will happen simply by the power of the instruction Comes the instruction, comes the empowerment. But in the material sense, that doesn't apply. <laughs> because no one's perfect, and the goals there are actually, we can't even say whether they're actually beneficial. Um, we actually see that if somebody fails in a material sense, that failure might actually be good for them. Um, because, as you said, the dynamics of material energy are so, so mutable, constantly changing, that the situation is auspicious or inauspicious, depending on how it's changing. I was thinking of the one situation where, um, I think it's happened, it was... It was a flight to Mangalore. Too. Somebody, there was a big flight coming to Mangalore, and one 
man who he bought a ticket for his friend to go. And uh, he said, here, this is a nice, you can go on this trip. And uh, the man had time, and he was thinking, and he decided not to go. For whatever reason, he just decided not to go. He, no reason was given. He just decided not to go. And the plane crashed, and everybody died. <laughs> and that was a quite a disaster. It was in the news. Uh, so, I mean, he was given a free ticket to go on a very pleasurable type of trip for some enjoyment. It might have been Goa, I'm not sure where, but it was some like coming into India. But even, if you, yeah, so everything looked good from the material point of view, but because he didn't take it, he, you know, he continued, he was able to escape, you know, the horrors of that crash. So a lot of times when we fail materially, it's beneficial. Because we can't actually see what will be the results materially. Nice. So that's why anything material is so so precarious. So many dynamics to it. Your karma, the the way was another person the opposite. This man was so rich that he would buy his way into anything he wanted. And one time he was was going on a flight also. And uh, oh, he came late and there was no seats left. But he came on and he bought his way in. Uh, he paid extra money to push somebody else off the flight. So he, he pushed this person off the flight. He got on the flight, the plane crashed and he died. <laughs> So that other person who got pushed off might have been thinking, wow, I got pushed off this flight. This is terrible. <laughs> but actually, his life was saved because he got pushed off. <laughs> so we can't, you can't really say what is beneficial and what is not beneficial by material achievements or material endeavors because they're too iffy. Because one thing always leads to something else. But spiritually, when we're working in a spiritual way, we get in, and we, if we work in a spiritual way and we do something without the sanction of the authorities, when something doesn't go our way, the reverses come, we become bewildered. Because we, we did it on our own without the blessings and the benefit and the uh, sanction of the authority. But when you act under the control of the authorities, then everything is auspicious and the results don't really matter because it's uh, it's within the context of following the instructions, which is, which is higher than the results. That makes sense? <laughs> Oh, yes, my Yes. Thank you. Okay, so we, we just have to determine, should I keep going or should I not keep going? You don't really know, so you just have to ask your friends and, and who else is your well-wishers. <laughs> Thank you for that, much. Right, Sri Devi? You know all about that. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, Guru Maharaj, there's no way to do it without Guru, Sadhu, and Shastra. No way. And time and time again, I think, no, 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 I should not trouble my Gurudev. This is so silly. I should get it by now. I should figure. And I constantly am bewildered. And finally, I have to come to the point of surrender and say, Gurudev, please help me. There is no way around it. So... Unfortunately, I'm too dull-headed. So if it can be helpful to all of you, don't waste time. Just ask Gurudev. I still don't get it because I'm very dull-headed. I confess that. And I, I, I just pray for me. Pray for me. Well, the results will come, but maybe not exactly the way you perceive it. <laughs>
that's my understanding. <laughs> <laughs> Guru Maharaj, I'm at peace. I'm at peace giving up all my ideas and writing to you. I'm completely at peace with your direction. And that itself is a great blessing on its own. What comes, what doesn't come, doesn't matter. But what's more important is I'm not stuck anymore. I'm moving forward and taking up the services and trying to do something with, you know, whatever little skills I have. And that's the most important gain in all this struggle. Keep going. All right. Thank you. Sukhavaha, she has a question. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to your lotus feet. Um, thank you, uh, Guru Maharaj, for all these explanations. And thank you, Mataji, for lovely slides and class. Uh, my, my question is in connection with uh, the previous question. Um, like you explained that materially uh, you have to think but so many times it happens that it is necessary that you have to do certain things and you are failed in that one and uh, that that situation is really terrible okay I, I get the points when you are at certain age that is not that matters that much but when you are young it does affect a lot um, and it is very difficult to make the decision, like uh, the Prabhuji said, that if you are trying for IIT and if you have failed, how many times you should try? It is it is hard to say three times, four times, or one time only, and then change. It is entirely how how do you how, like how do you take the decision for at that age? It is really difficult, and. Um, Everybody around you expects you because you are clever. Oh, you should be doing this. And if you can't do it, then uh, that impression of yours goes so low that people think, oh, you're not capable of doing anything. And then, you know, how much ever you try that you don't get attached to the results, people do get depressed. How do you get over that situation and what to do in that situation? Okay, Frank Kishori. You are more versed in these type of things than I am. <laughs> but, but I'll try Grimash, but I'll be happy to be corrected. Uh, Mataji, um, thank you for the, the kind words and thank you for your attendance and thank you for the question. So if I'm that person, and I'm a, I think I was that person because I didn't get into a medical college in one go, I had to repeat the exams. What helped me, I can say, is like, my parents never invalidated my feelings of worthlessness. They never like, the, yes, they said you can do it, but they never said that I, if I'm feeling upset, they never, I don't recall saying that, oh, don't be upset, life goes on. They never gave me like a lollipop. They actually like held my feelings. And I'm grateful to have parents like that, like held it for me that yes, whatever you're going through is true, is valid, but it is only true at this moment. You still have a, you still have an ability to change it, or you still have an ability to keep living with it. I remember my dad saying, "So now it's up to you uh, what you want to do." So you're still not out of choices, you see, and you're still not out of choices. And IIT, okay, IIT is uh, yeah, that's a very big engineering college in India. Uh, but what is that? We have to ask that person, what are you looking for? What are, you, what are you looking for? That will be a question I'll ask at this stage to my son. God forbid if he, if he goes through what you're telling. What are you looking for? Are you looking for getting an engineering degree from a good university so you can uh, have a, be a stable finances and achieve your career goals so you can have time for your Krishna consciousness? Or what's your aspiration? question for them so one two things i can say is from the shastras like krishna is holding arjun's feelings he's he krishna doesn't need to spend and arjun ask some people say 17 questions i counted 24 questions in bhagavad gita some people say 17 i have counted i have a list 24 questions arjun is asking to krishna in bhagavad gita and every time i look at those questions i look at today's question he's asking it again 
Krishna would have said, I told you now, sir, two chapters ago. <laughs> but he held his feelings and he tried innovative ways to explain it in a different manner. And then he keeps on keeps on having this that uh, okay you want to be upset be upset but don't stop talking talk about it. Um, we do need someone to hold our feelings because Krishna consciousness is not about repression. No, there isn't there a verse in third chapter what can repression accomplish? There are rules for attachment and three thirty one rules in it uh, rules for principles that govern attachment and aversions uh, for. I don't recall, like if one goes away, if I, I I can bring up the verse if you want, but then the end line is 332. What can repression accomplish? You know, I'm not there yet. I'm not a pure devotee. If you tell me that uh, this thing is doesn't matter, which is true. It doesn't matter in the in the transcendental realm. It's true, but I'm not there yet. Can you bring me to that place? By holding Arjun is standing in front of Krishna, you know, what more? He's not there yet. Yes. What more? So those will be my two cents to say. Um, and I also say that uh, I want you to know it's okay to be upset, but I, I I'll still love you. This I'll still love you. Whether you go to this college or that college or you do this or that, but you mean so much to me. So uh, in Karuna Care, Rajla Mataji was telling me the other day, they're starting a new department. You know about Karuna Care, right? And the new department under grief, people, devotees were grieving. They are starting a new department to train people how to just sit with the person who's grieving. Can you believe that? Not, not talk or not do and just sit with that person who's grieving. Ram Guru Mataji and Rajla Mataji. Rajla Mataji was telling me this the other day. Right? Mm -hmm. Ram Guru Mataji says the best support you can give. I'm maybe going a little tangential to what you asked, but I'm just sharing mm -hmm. that in India, like uh, she said when she lived in Rindavan for 10 years and there were some ladies who were like grieving the loss of a family member or something. She said the best thing she saw is that the ladies in the neighborhood would take turns and come and sit with this lady who's grieving. Just sit. Just mm -hmm. sit, give her water, just don't talk, just sit, sit, sit. So we need someone to hold our feelings. Krishna is holding Arjun's feelings. He's not splattering it. Okay. I do understand. Thank you, Mataji. Uh, you were lucky that you had uh, you had that um, support, but not everybody gets that support. It is very hard to struggle when you are on your own. And yeah. uh, society is really cruel, frankly speaking. Why beyond. do you have to be on your own? You know, this is another because there is nobody there to, you know, you, you trusting somebody is very difficult as well. I'm not saying, I, look, this is um, something I have been through and I know how difficult it is to come out of that particular situation. And I'm trying to help the Prabhuji who asked this question by asking more questions because sometimes at that stage you don't ask more questions and that is where we are wrong we should ask more questions and we we have to uh, reach out for the support basically uh, uh, that if you if you want uh, if you are feeling lonely if you are feeling uh, that there is nobody there with you and if you don't ask anyone for the support then uh, it is really difficult to live and so many times I've seen the youth suffering like that, including myself. I've been through that situation. It was very hard to come out of it. By graces of Krishna, I have come out of it. But I, I, I would like to let everyone know that if you are in that particular situation, please, please ask for the support that is available. And it's not that you have to struggle and suffer alone. So... Uh, my question was to help that Prabhuji rather than me asking that question. But sorry, mm -hmm. if you feel that. But I just wanted to yeah. help, help them that whoever is suffering like that, please do not suffer because one failure is no end of the life, as, you, as we all say that. And second thing is when one thing closes, the, the door opens. But only thing, we have to open our eyes and look for it. Thank you, Madhuji. I can share one thing. When we started this course, in 2020, June, uh, I finished one batch. And I was like, we we're super nervous because, you know, my Shiksha Guru from Mangalore just called and said, we are launching and there were just 
four of us. Mm -hmm. And then we have to overnight prepare. So we were preparing slides at till 3 a.m. and presenting at 7 a.m. So this is how bad it was at the time. I was like, this is impossible. I'm getting tired. I'm not sleeping hardly one hour, 24 hours a day, but still go on, go on, go on. Somehow finished the first thing. I got a phone call from one lady in South India. It was COVID, no, everything was shut down. She calls me and she says that, uh, we we our business shut down. My husband was under this much amount of debt, and there was no way to pay. I have a nine year old and a thirteen year old child, and they were not in Krishna consciousness. They just got like WhatsApp linked to this class, and she said these classes we were contemplating uh, that we will poison our children first, and then we both will eat poison. Uh, but these classes. Overview of Bhagavad Gita, Shri Prabhupada's teachings saved us. Mm, yeah. true. And then rest is history. I can actually write a small booklet as to how much people have like 5 million people we have crossed. This is mm. saved. This is saved us. So I got like, okay, now why was I cribbing so much that I could only sleep one hour out of 24 hours? <laughs> <laughs> so many days. It, it really like I can I'm still getting those goosebumps. It's like really like got me that okay, I got to keep moving. This is motivating. That is so true. Yes. That is really Thank inspiring. You. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Krishna. Uh, Grimaj, there's a question in the chat, but uh, go ahead, Shidei Mataji. I was just I mean, just my humble two cents, if I may add to uh Tejya Prabhu's question as well as Sukhava's question, if I may. Uh, sometimes, you know, the answers don't come when we want them, you know. But if we just let it go, let it go and say, I surrender this. I don't know the answers. I don't know what's going to happen, but I have no, I have no control over this. Sometimes, after some time, Krishna will show you the answers. Either some devotee will come along and say something or in your heart, you will suddenly get the answer to your question. Or when you're chanting, suddenly a, a door will open that you didn't see before. So Krishna is always trying. The Dami Buddhi Yogam Tam. It's just that because we are so blinded by our own, you know, attachment to achieving that or getting that or receiving that. We are not hearing. We are not hearing the voice of Krishna because he's always trying. He's always trying to help. So just thought I'll just say that. Thank you, Mataji. That is so important. Really, really very important point. And that is my experience as well. So I completely agree with you. We say you should be, uh, you should strive for regulation, but not be attached to it. <laughs> Which so means, is it okay? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, which means that in pursuing our different goals within life and, and within Krishna consciousness, there's different ways you can approach. And if you're attached to in one particular way, you might find yourself not be able to move forward because of the, your attachment to a certain method or a certain mindset when you see that then you, you have to think well what what Sri Devi said is that sometimes you have to just let it go and see what other options come automatically by the, the arrangement of the supreme or to facilitate that you can start praying that hey I don't know where I'm going or how to get there um, dear lord just show me the way <laughs> Some sincere prayers, and that, and that, when it comes to devotional service, it'll come. You know, for a devotee, even their material life will, will be impacted if they pray that way, because mm -hmm. for for Krishna, the devotee's material life is also important. He'll also help them in that sense too. Mm -hmm. His devotee, and Krishna helps in all aspects. Of a devotee's life. Thank you, Guru Mahadev. It's really, really powerful points. And it does help. And it is, I think, all the devotees experience as well. So, yeah, everyone should 
if they if we do that it is it becomes very easy thank you kumar there is a question in the chat do we have time for me to read it or no oh yeah i'm i'm fine Hi Krishna, I'll go to Guru Maharaj. My question is about my grandma. She's eighty-seven years old. She's a great devotee, always thinking about Krishna since my childhood. She taught us the deity worship, importance of Guru, and lot more like Guru. She studied all the shastras, alvar stories, taught us how to be Krishna centric in life. But due to some reasons, she's now living in old age home and always thinking about Krishna, and she's crying not to serve him properly. At the same time, she is increasing her attachment on her son. I try to discuss all the stories of the Trashtra, Jada Bharat, etc. Still, she wants to be with her son. How to explain her in this situation? Well, is that an impossible desire? In practice, is it impractical? Can't really say. Mataji, do you would like to unmute? I don't know if she sent it to me privately. I don't know if she wants me to take her name. Would like to unmute and converse with us? We really answered that. We have to know the whole situ the situation more clearly. Mm -hmm. You can't just by seeing the surface. You can't understand what are the dynamics. What is the nature of that person? What is the nature? Why? What is best for her? Who can make that decision to dis to decide? Yes. What are the you know solving problems is not just addressing the the uh, external appearance of a problem. <clears throat> you have to you have to really know, but sometimes when you can't really get into all of the details, you just say. Just chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and all the answers will come. <laughs> and that's not a, that's not a an escape answer either. That's an answer that actually works if one chants with faith. <laughs> you have to not only chant but chant with faith. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Gunaj. Yeah. Baba actually said that one time when he was asked questions. He said, "He said, just chant Hare Krishna, all your answers, all your questions will be answered, and you'll actually have less questions too." <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Gurmaj. I think Shimati, you can. It's not an escape answer, it actually works. Because the holy name is the embodiment of the absolute truth in all aspects. And therefore, everything is with, found within the holy name. <laughs> everything. But we have to approach it with faith. If we don't approach it with that faith, without that faith, we don't unlock the, the mercy of the holy name. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj and uh, Prem Kishori and everyone for participating in this nice discussion. Thank you all very much. Um, if there are no more questions or comments, I think we can end the call here. I would like to just thank uh, Prem Kishori for making the sacrificing and staying through the whole program. Yes. I think it was fun. I just told my neighbors to take my children. <laughs> Thank you. I'm very grateful to them. <laughs> Did it? <laughs> yeah, the fact that you thought about it in that way was super so. <laughs> yeah. You said instruction comes with empowerment. So this is a live example this morning. <laughs> so... Thank you for being the teacher and the example. <laughs> <laughs> I think this argument will continue. Thank you, Gurmaj. Gurmaj, will you take chapter six tomorrow? Or yeah, I thought I was. I, I unfortunately I didn't look at the schedule, and then I was. No. 
I talked to somebody uh, who I believe had complete knowledge of the situation, and they said I was going to be doing tomorrow. So without checking the schedule, I, I just I took the word. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you all so much. You. Um, okay, so we meet you tomorrow. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Prem Kishori, Shri Bhati, all the Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj.